What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. So today, totally different style of topic. It's not specifically about going out to shoot. And yes, I have a very whiny dog, unfortunately. Shh. Hey, stop. Anyways, so I was watching a video by Simon Dantremont, and yeah, enough. My apologies. As I was saying, I was watching a video by Simon Dantremont, and uh, he's a Canadian wildlife photographer. Great, great channel. Very educational. And he had mentioned something about reed noise in cameras, which made me start to wonder and think and recall my experiences with the Pentax K30 and the Pentax K3 and now the Pentax K3 Mark III in regards to the sensors and uh, noise at high ISO and that sort of thing. So I took all three and I shot an image with the lens cap on because it's just about the read noise of the sensor itself. And I adjusted the images in post to raise the light uh, in a matter of speaking so that it would really bring out what uh, color grading and shading and noise level that the sensors themselves were getting. And it's quite interesting. There are some telltale things in regards to what some people have mentioned in regards to Pentax cameras, namely, oh, they don't do well with reds and uh, magenta hues and things like that. And yes, that is absolutely the case. And you'll clearly be able to see how those become very oversaturated. However, it also does depend on the camera. Now, to me, the Pentax K30 has always had a remarkable sensor. This thing, I've shot this at 12,800 ISO and the image was pretty freaking clean. So I've always respected the heck out of the sensor that's in the Pentax K30, even though it is 16 megapixels, the quality of the image and the cleanliness at high ISO is incredible. Now the K3, yeah, it is known as not the greatest sensor for shooting at high ISO. This thing gets noisy quick and yeah, you'll see that too. Um, right. And then of course the K3 Mark III with the latest generation of sensor on Pentax cameras. Complete night and day difference between the K3 and the K3 Mark III. And the K30 to the K3 is also a pretty remarkable difference. So let's look at the images and I shot each one with the exact same settings. I will explain all that and let's see what the results were. Okay, we're gonna start off with the Pentax K30. And if you look over to the right hand side there, uh, I've got the green background on one of my phones and then in the center I have another phone which is showing the blue color hue so it's one of those uh, fades from a light blue to a dark blue then kind of over to a purple and then on the left side I have a USB-C card reader which is an interesting red color however it is red it's a matte finish it is not pink it is red uh, it appears to be more on the pink side on this image which once you see the sensor read noise it will all make sense so after this we're going to actually switch over to the pentax k3 with the same scene uh, same image and you'll be able to see subtle shifts in uh, the color hue and then we're going to move over to the Pentax K3 Mark III with the same scene again. And then we will do the direct side-by-side -side image comparison for the sensor read noise. And you'll see exactly what's happening. Now you'll see the K3 Mark I, affectionately called, but essentially the Pentax OG K3. The colors are oversaturated. The green is really intense. The blue, not so much. It's a little on the underexposed side in comparison, but the red is now 
pretty essentially pink in color. And there is a reason for that. Uh, all the cameras were set to the same imaging profile and it all comes down to the sensor itself and the read noise values in regards to what it is producing uh, in regards to false color. So I thought this was a very interesting comparison, especially given the fact that the Pentax K3 is the higher end camera, although the K30 is also just a 16 megapixel camera and it's at the lower end of the scale, but they do use different sensors. And the K30, I think, actually produces a better overall image than the Pentax K3. Now, the Pentax K3 Mark III, as you can see here, the colors at first glance seem to be a bit subdued. However, these are much more accurate across the board. The blue is correct in contrast to the lit up screen that is green on the other cam phone, camera phone, whatever. And the red is much more accurately represented with the matte metallic finish, the way it's painted for the USB-C uh, multi-card reader adapter. And overall, the, uh, the, the shading is a much more accurate representation of the overall scene as well. And we're about to get into the specifics as to why are there these differences in between these cameras from the K30 to the K3 to the K3 Mark III solely based on the way the sensors themselves produce their signal to noise ratio. Now here's where we get into the nitty gritty of the sensor and read noise. Now obviously the least amount of little dots is less noise. So as you can see, the K30, there are some darker areas, so there is actually less noise being produced by that sensor. However, the Pentax K3, as you can see, has a more pink hue all across the image sensor itself. Now, for me to test this, I basically shot at a higher ISO and then I raised the exposure and shadows in post. I did the identical uh, adjustments on both sensors or both images uh, for these as well as the K3 Mark III, which I'll show in a second. But this really does highlight that color shift difference in between how the images from the sensor are actually captured. Now, here is the incredible part. Look at how insanely clean the K3 Mark III image is with the same settings I shot with the K30 and the Pentax K3. You still don't believe me? No problem. Let's combine all three captures together so you can really see the difference. So now that we have all the sensor images together, you can clearly see the remarkable difference between the K30, the K3, and the K3 Mark III. Obviously with the K3 Mark III being the least color shifted of the sensors in regards to their read noise. The other interesting thing is Pentax did state on the K3 Mark III that they worked very, very hard to be able to create the way it captures an image at very high ISO without losing any color rendition, which obviously on the K3, you can see it is quite pink. The K30, not so much, but still kind of slides over to that reddish pinkish hue, right? Purpley pink, I guess. And it does also show uh, with the actual scene that I had shot that there is a remarkable difference between all three of these cameras. So there you go. Sometimes newer is not always better. However, it also depends very heavily on the sensor itself and how each manufacturer implements the sensors and processing all that stuff. Now, all the images that you did see were the DNG files direct from the cameras. There was no post editing except for, as I said, raising the exposure and raising the shadows to illustrate the color rendition 
of the noise ratio, right? So obviously the K3 Mark III has a much better signal to noise ratio than either the K3 or the K30. And the K30 has a better signal to noise ratio than the K3. So there you go. The cause and rendition of sensor noise. Isn't this scientific outlook awesome? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the video, leave a like. If you have not already, please do subscribe. It always helps out. And if you want to support the channel, that info is at the bottom of the description. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. And I will see you on my next video. I'm out.